We now come to the Olympus E3. This was the last camera I owned before upgrading to Micro Four Thirds. It still had an optical finder, and although live view was available on the camera screen, with the finder I used center weighted metering to control exposure, as spot is very precise and unforgiving if you get it wrong. It is still in good working order. Now passed to a friend after I had acquired my first OMD. Being close to the sea, the mountains of Snowdonia attract inclement weather like magnets. If your timing is right, the photographic effects are dramatic. That is, if you don't mind getting wet. You don't want to overexpose those splashes of light in the distance. Because of the dominance of shadow, I used center-weighted metering and not ESP. Triven and the Glidders are iconic mountains, and because of their popularity, parking is difficult. But we came by private coach, which afterwards went away. Itwal is a glacial hanging valley that cuts deep into the mountains, and Triven is its sentinel. You have to climb Triven at least once in your life, and I have done it twice, and that was enough. Snowden is much easier. Notice how four thirds gives that extra depth of field when required. Essential for the foreground rock, and I probably use the hyperfocal distance as program is using factor eight. Again, sharpness is essential from front to back with this shot. Helped by the amazing Zuiko 7-14 Wide Angle Pro Lens, and f11 to increase depth of field even further, with the added advantage of four-thirds technology. As the lens shoves everything into the background, the foreground is important, and sand patterns fill this requirement incredibly well. Same technique here, but now with the Zuiko 12-60 lens, which like today's 12-100 Micro Four Thirds Pro lens was one of their flagship optics. Now this image also has a huge dynamic range, no HDR then, but I could save the RAW and adjust in Lightroom, which is what I very much do today anyway. In 2008, I was commissioned to produce a book on Northamptonshire, which incidentally you can still purchase. Contrary to general opinion, four-thirds and micro-four-thirds technology was absolutely okay for this demanding type of professional work, and I couldn't leave out the vibrant colours of the Grand Union Canal at Stoke Brun. HF holidays have occupied two hotels in the southern half of the Peak District, both not far from the ever-popular Dovedale, a honeypot if there ever was one. Being close to the dale enabled the photographer to shoot this dramatic valley at quiet times, as the following selection of images will now demonstrate. The Newton Grange Hotel was located near the Tissington Trail, previously a railway that ran from Ashbourne to Buxton. It is now a walkway and cycle track. Easy access enabled the photographer to nip out at a moment's notice when the weather was either dramatic or, as seen here, picture postcard, the kind of image that might grace a calendar. Now this shot is taken about a mile down the track towards the village of Tissington. Other paths radiate from the Tissington Trail, opening up tremendous opportunities for the landscape photographer. Because of the extensive vistas, it is important to include foreground interest, adding depth and perspective. Again, like the previous shot, getting to these spots with the right weather is so essential, and having a hotel nearby definitely helps. As mentioned, Dovedale is a honeypot, 
and arriving at these prime locations without people is an art in itself. I looked up the time for this shot. I am a stickler for setting the date and time correct on my camera, as it can save problems later. It was taken at 11.06 a.m. an hour later, and it would look quite different. Notice again the ideal use of the Zuiko 7-14 Pro lens, so essential when photographing in a deep, enclosed valley, which I have made use of for enhancing the composition. Now this shot is just across the way from the last. You can see the bridge there in the distance. Dovedale is famed for its distinctive rock outcrops. It was concealed by trees, incidentally, in the last photograph. The chap who has just walked into the picture does give the scene scale, and in particular the limestone rock. Being a photographer, he could have been from my party, actually. I always took my group to some interesting places, but I have now retired after 25 years and something like 250 holidays. The sheer convenience of the Tissington Trail close to the hotel gave easy and convenient access to early morning and late evening shoots, as here. Quite often when running a photo holiday, students were sometimes disappointed with the depth of colour achieved with their sunset images. This was because they were on matrix or ESP metering. It takes a general reading, and if there is extensive shadow, as there often is, the image is overexposed. Today, with the benefit of an electronic finder, I use spot metering because I can see what I'm doing. You can't with an optical finder unless you use live view on the camera's screen. Therefore, as the E3 has an optical finder, I play safe with center-weighted metering and underexposed, giving colors a bit of oomph without making them look unnatural. For my final shot, I come close to home territory, the South Downs and big open views. These can give composition problems, even when the weather, as here, is amazingly clear. I could have walked a little further forward and have more of the valley. Instead, I chose the foreground to add the third dimension, complemented by interesting cloud cover. Micro Four Thirds arrived in 2009, an amazing technology used today and growing in popularity. I hung on to the E3 for some time, gently dipping my toes into Micro Four Thirds territory by first trying one of the new pen cameras before going the whole hog with the EM5. But that is another story, and we'll have to wait for a future Just Landscapes.